Hello and welcome to another session. Today we're going to be looking at materials management and thinking about how you can cut materials efficiently, minimise waste and also consider the aspect of nesting which is another important feature of design. So when we consider what um, we can do to minimise waste and cut materials efficiently we have to start thinking about when I make products and design products can I make them fit inside one another and that's the principle of nesting. As you can see the eggs in theory sit inside the nest, one sits inside the other. And on the next slide we'll look at some of the other different ways of doing this in products. And as you can see here we've got a number of nested products. Quite often kitchenware is used as you can see here, things are sitting inside, they're nesting inside each other. I like particularly the, the knife nesting feature, like that's, that's quite a clever ingenious idea how one blade sits inside the other. And the classic example as you know is the Russian dolls one sits inside the other to the other. Um, one thing I've seen in the past with students work is that actually sometimes nesting can happen in the actual product. As you can see this student has designed uh, light which was in sort of the modifications iteration stage and actually you can see that he's used the, the cutouts to actually make the arm that actually holds the bulb and it's not finished yet but as you can see that's quite effective use of nesting in a different way, in a different style minimising waste. So as a designer, how do we go about getting ready and prepared for manufacture and thinking about the minimisation of waste? You've got two examples here. The first one, as you can see, has got this stool, thinking about how I can plan to minimise waste. And there is some space around here that's available, and you could have had perhaps extra things put in slightly different. There's some gaps. Whereas this example, where someone's making a, a manufactured door frame or door for a kitchen cupboard, they've got minimum waste. So you've got minimal waste to planning down to commercial production side when we're having almost zero waste. Really important. Have a look at the video here as well in this link. It gives you a bit more understanding of how things are manufactured using CNC routers. Um, and we use that in schools and apply it to our design and make products, perhaps with laser cutters as well. But I hope that makes sense and helps you uh, understand that in a bit more detail. So as junior designers, we often use laser cutters. And there's a couple of examples on this page where you can see that actually we may come up with something on perhaps 2D design that comes and arrays this in a certain format. But actually to be more useful in terms of waste, we want to cluster and look at this word called tessellation. And tessellation is another key aspect which we'll look at later in this presentation. But you can see it works really well. There is also free nesting software for laser cutters, which allows you to plan to make things with the minimum wastage of space. And again, have a look at the link down here. As you can see, that will help. And there's the example of a product that they've used for that free software. So when we're planning to make a product, we have to consider how we can minimise waste. And here's a little challenge. We have a piece of material that's 400 millimetres by 200 uh, and 80 millimetres tall. And we have um, a dimension which is 100 millimetres by a 60. We have a piece of material. How many pieces of this material can we get on this sheet? And that's quite a challenge in a way that we have to start considering where we cut and so on. So have a little think about that, see if you can work that out before you move on to the next slide. And actually, as you can see, we can get uh, 16 pieces on here, but we have a piece of waste material as well. Um, we'll think about how the, the principles of that work or don't work in a minute, but can you work out the actual space in millimetres squared of waste? And that's a classic GCSE exam question that comes in, so get yourself prepared have a go at that and see if you can work out the answer. So we also consider stock size and materials when we're working in technology. And, and you can see that a stock size of man-made board is actually 2,440 millimetres by 1,220 millimetres. So it's 2.44 metres wide by 1.22 metres tall. So the first little bit of mass for you to start thinking about is what is that area in millimetres square for a full sheet of material? See if you can work that one out. And this is a classic challenge 
So we require as a design product six pieces of this material 700 by 200 and six pieces of this material 400 by 300. How do we go about arranging this in the space we have? What's the best arrangement to minimize wastage? How do we go about that? What material area do we got left over? And what material have we used? So we've got to start thinking and using a bit of our planning brain and thinking that's sort of our brain. How can we go about planning what's best for our material area? Not always straightforward. So some things to consider when we're minimizing waste are why are we arranging it in a certain pattern? Why are we arranging this piece of material here? Is that a good use, an efficient use of material when you've got gaps here? Perhaps not. Why are we placing things right up the edge? Probably a good idea if you've got a straight edge to cut using the straight edge. This area here you've got a gap, whereas this one's exactly on. When we're cutting perhaps on a circular saw, um, you would need to allow for a saw blade width. So we may be allowing five millimeters cut width between each piece. Whereas if we're using a laser cutter, that, that actual width of cut would be much smaller and it could be almost on top of the next piece. So thinking about that is really important. Depends on the type of machinery and the process you're using is really important. But please, and many times I've said this to my students, don't put things in middle of sheets. Think about using it sensibly so that we are minimizing our wastage. So if we require six of each part, how do we arrange this in the best way? Now there's, there's a couple of options I'm going to show, them, show you in the next couple of slides. Um, thinking about our arrangement, we could fit it in that way potentially where we have those uh, six pieces there. We've got five along here. We sadly can't fit that top one in there, so we have to drop it into this side here. And what it does is leave us with this entire hatch space here. To make it easy to calculate the amount of wastage, I've used a bit of maths here, and I've divided the space, the area, into three rectangles. One, two, and three. So the first rectangle is 710 by 170, or I'm here I've done it 170 millimetres by 710 millimetres, which give, it gives me this calculation of 120,700 millimetres. The second rectangle is 220 millimetres wide by 500, gives me another calculation. And thirdly, I'm going to leave you to work out this and then total this up, because on the next slide there's a different um, way of presenting the work and organizing our work to see if it's better this way or another and your job is to calculate that. And on this slide I've got a different format as you can see I've put the six pieces along the bottom and these six are here leaving me two rectangles. Now as a technician I may be finding it easier to take this piece off and then these leaving me two more useful size pieces of material that's left over in waste because I've got almost half a sheet of material. So speaking to your technician and teacher will really help you here. Think about planning what's the best organized way, but also think about how much space is wasted. How much have you used? Which one is the most space and area left? And you might find that one is more beneficial to use than the other and use that in your NEA projects and in any project work that you're planning to do. So your next area to focus on is about nesting and then perhaps tessellations. They're important. Tessellations are about how objects can fit into one another, how they can actually join to one another. And I want you on this particular slide to pick three and show how they tessellate by drawing 20 of each shape and colour render them. You can use some fading, some um, rendering to practice that as well. Um, if you've got tracing paper, great, use that. You can use uh, squared dotted paper and you've got six which are normal square dots and you've got six that are actual triangular dotted. We call it isometric dots. If you haven't got that, that's not a problem at all. You can um, draw around it, cut out a template and make uh, 20 of those by using the template and repeating them. Have a go and see which ones work and how they inter interconnect with each other because just like nesting, tessellation is really important 
as a feature. Uh, just a bit of a note, as you can see, there's some simpler shapes which are much easier, and there's more complex shapes at the bottom that might be a bit more of a challenge for you. So please pick one of the more challenging ones, um, maybe one from the middle and one from the top row, that would be great. Hope it goes well, and best of luck. So there's two other tasks here now, which are extensions or things that if you want to get investigating and use as another lesson. But uh, first of all, you can see these ideas here have thought about geometry and tessellations and how they fit into one another to form different, um, really clear, bright products. And this was this chap here, this distilled design movement. So have an investigation of that. There's loads of links if you look on um, any of the websites that you can find, I'm sure. Have a go at that and see how that links to this area and topic. Really interesting movement, that one. And lots of influence in design. The other aspect is to have a go at making a geometric shape logo. Copy and paste it out um, into your worksheet that I'm going to attach to the YouTube link um, because there are questions that link to this work. Um, you can have that as part of your, um, your own logo as you go forward and you've got and created your own one. So please use this website. Hope you enjoyed the session today. Um, think about materials management, minimising waste when you're coming to do your practical work, particularly your NEA, but also in any work that you do in Key Stage 3. Hope this helps and enjoy the session. Bye.